Hello, hello. Today we're going to talk about land ownership. Fact or fiction? Well, as you mm, could be aware by now, something I would always say is depends on the perspective in which you reside in. Whether land ownership is really a fact or a fiction. And you know, just keep it really simple to start off with. If you think about like the word ownership and the kind of etymology of, of ownership, you know, it's supposedly a right by which a thing belongs to a person or a body. Um, you know, a person, a body, what's the difference between those? I guess a body probably would prefer more to like something of an organization that's not necessarily a person. You know, and these are all very sort of human-centric sort of ideas. I, I do understand that. And then, you know, just to think of the word land, it's the etymology of land. Well, you know, it's normally like a portion of the Earth's surface. And, you know, because of the reality in which we reside in, um, we live on the surface of the Earth within that sort of collective narrative, Right. And I'm sure there are other narratives and realities and um, maybe even surfaces that we will not be discussing within the, the realms of this vlog. Let's keep it a little bit more sort of not multi-dimensional, just very one-dimensional if we can. <laughs> or third dimensional, depending on what label you want to sort of label this dimension. Anyway, I... We'll get back into what I'm here to say. <laughs> so, buying land. Well, I'll keep it sort of within the constructs of this land in which I reside in, Australia, and the sort of white man way, you know, like land and land ownership in Australia in the white man way. I want to say that with quotation marks is, you know, basically the Commonwealth can take it from you technically whenever they wish to you just kind of have like an estate in which you can use that land um, in their technical white man law it's sort of like it, no individual person really owns the land it's this sort of commonwealth and they give you a right to have an estate in that portion of which you've supposedly bought right and, you know, I'm sure yeah, it's pretty common knowledge these days, like most sort of uh, nations, you know, something like Australia, are registered sort of companies um, nowadays anyway. And uh, I'm residing in the state of Queensland as I'm recording this. And, you know, the, the, the land sort of titles office or department, you know, that sort of, um, propriety of this you know company Australia right is even that in itself is called the Queensland um, titles registry propriety limited or something along those lines so even that in itself it's no longer like a department of a of a government it's a sort of government as we would have uh, I guess expected maybe a hundred years ago it's now actually literally kind of like a subsidiary of some sort so of the government of Australia, right? It may seem like I'm a little bit digressing here, but just keep following. And, you know, so... It's interesting, obviously, like, you know, so the Commonwealth, right, owns this land, technically, and in only, I'm only talking here in the white man way. The white man way. They think they own the land, then it has its own sort of like agents, such as the Australian government. And the Australian government has its own sort of subsidiaries, you know, depending on which states you're in. And, you know, even with that sort of white man, human created law, the obtaining of that land originally was not even legal in its own human white man law created like reality like <laughs> the law, the white man laws that supposedly we're all supposed to abide by 
even looking at the, you know, the obtaining of the land through that lens, it wasn't even done legally. So, you know, obviously there's some flaws in that. And, and I guess the point of me mentioning, you know, this whole white man label is also I want to bring in the concept of land and, and I can't even really say land ownership because land ownership to the original peoples of, of Australia is such a foreign concept. And I also know it's not the only, you know, land in the world in which that is actually a very foreign um, concept of land ownership. You know, in Australia, the original peoples, it's all about custodianship. And the custodianship, I mean, it doesn't take much just to look at the etymology of what does custodianship mean. You know, it's, it's one that takes care of the land. I also understand, or understand, should I say, that, you know, the custodianship is not actually an original people's word. It does, it's not in their language, their 500 plus beautiful languages that they have. So there's obviously been a translation of a word in probably a number of different, um, you know, it could be 500 different words that all kind of encompass one meaning and then trying to translate that into an English kind of speaking language. Um, and I guess what we've, the consensus is, is as close as we can put it in, is uh, custodianship. And, you know, yes, the translation of words from an original language, or should I say a language in which, you know, is, is probably considered much older than the English language, that does have its own limitations. I mean, I could share some more about the um, supposed uh, Treaty of Waitangi in New Zealand and the translations between um, the iwi and uh, the English language, the te reo Māori in the English language and the, how that caused um, some, uh, let's say, misjustices. Anyway, it's not the point of the video. So, you know, and I guess the point of me sharing about this you know, land ownership, or is it more actually custodianship, is to get us back into remembering that everything is temporary. And I don't remind you just for the fact of you to sort of embody this energy or this, um, this mindset of, oh, well, it's just temporary, why should I even care about the land I live on, like, who gives a whatever. Um, <sighs> But it's actually, I'm reminding you because I would, I'm trying to encourage the embodiment that's almost in the polarity to that of, okay, everything is temporary and I am, or we are custodians of this land in which we're residing in. So how do we actually take care of this land for those that will always be coming after? us you know if it's not your children someone else's children and you know just to take better care of the land and to share the land you know with the animals the plants the people and appreciating your relationship and your connection with that land. Well, some pretty amazing things can happen actually. I'll leave that open up to your imagination because I'm not here to tell you what that should and shouldn't look like. And another thing I would like to just gently remind you is just because you in this human created law have a right to reside somewhere does not necessarily take away the rights of others in universal law and as some of you may be aware universal law will always override human created law in some shape or form at some point within this weird time sort of line that we sit in so yeah land ownership fact or fiction 
There's a lot of things for you to ponder. You can research some more on, on those, right? And depends also on the perspective that you want to reside in. Do you want to stay with this sort of, you know, white man, human created law? Or do you want to see land ownership as more of a land custodianship like the original peoples that potentially resided on the land that you now reside on? And I am, you know, I am very aware that, you know, this kind of white man sort of label you know, this has been a transpiring and a spiraling sort of evolution, de-evolution, whatever you want to see it as, of where they once were once upon a time. Like custodianship was, from my understanding, a concept that was actually acknowledged across all peoples all around the world. It didn't matter what colour one's skin resided in. It was just a a sort of fractalization or fragmentation, should I say, of, of different ways of how that is now seen. Um, so now I'm feeling like this is probably all I need to share within this, this vlog. I'm curious to know around your sort of concepts and ponderings of land ownership or land custodianship. And if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to leave those in the comment section down below. I'm also on a various other uh, social media platforms as well if you would rather connect on there and I will see you soon.